have always loved old buildings, especially houses. I think I was heavily influenced by my mother. She took me on many garden tours and beautiful estates growing up. While I always loved the gardens, I most enjoyed peeking in the windows of the beautiful homes and wondering about the families that lived there. When I came to Lewis and Clark College, I remember my father remarking, are we sending you to a country club? Because at the time, the manor house, gardens, and pool seemed the most prominent structures on the campus. I used to walk around the campus and wonder why would you give up such a beautiful home if this had been in your family? It made me want to find out the story about why. I've met some people along the way who have shared their stories about the property with me. Stories about its original origins and what the family was like, stories about how the college acquired it, and stories about living in it when it was a girl's dormitory right after World War II. I'm so glad this house has been so painstakingly maintained and respectfully remodeled over the years so that this iconic structure can be enjoyed for future generations. I'm Janice McNeil Botan, and I attended Lewis and Clark College uh, from 1960 to 1964. And I had the good fortune, the absolute good luck, of, of uh, writing Jerry Frank's um, autobiography this last year. And uh, he was fourth generation Oregonian from the very uh, legendary Myron Frank family. And it was while doing this research that it ran across the story of how the Frank Manor House came to be and how it became Lewis and Clark College. 1920, the Myron Frank store was very successful. They were very wealthy. And the people who were running the store were Aaron and Lloyd Frank. And um, they were very different boys. Uh, Aaron was uh, very dogmatic, uh, very driven. He was the CEO for 40 years, the most powerful businessman in Oregon for uh, between 1920 and, and the 1960s. His brother, his older brother Lloyd, was entirely different. He liked to dress well. He liked to live the good life. He liked to know the fancy people. And he was much more interested in building beautiful homes and creating beautiful things. He was very artistic. More interested in that than running the store. Um, also at this time in Portland there was a very strong uh, atmosphere of bigotry against Jewish people and while the Meyer and Frank family rose up against that bigotry by being so generous and so um, supportive of the city of Portland and in so many civic things that often this bigotry really didn't touch this family. But, however, there were instances where this did happen. And one of those instances was the golf courses, the country clubs, and some of the social clubs that were really not available to Jewish people. So Lloyd went out to uh, the country club, Waverly Country Club, the nicest country club in Oregon, and said, hey guys, I'm interested in joining. And they said, sorry Lloyd, you're, you can't join, you're Jewish. And Lloyd was mad as a hornet. And he said to them, I'll show you. I will build a place better than your country club. You just can count on it. And what he built was amazing. He built the beautiful manor house. He went directly from the country club, Waverly Country Club, out to uh, Palatine Hill Road, found 63 acres on top of the hill, and bought it. And then he went about uh, designing, from 1923 to 1925, designing this beautiful place with architect Herman Brookman, who was a Jewish architect from New York, brought him out. Brookman was so happy out here and he had so much business that he stayed. But for two years, they designed this beautiful Frank Manor house. Um, the, the story goes that, uh, uh, that Lloyd was not a faithful husband. He was married to the beautiful Edna from the San Francisco family. Uh, she was from a jewelry family. They built this beautiful place, and together they were host and hostess of Portland. All of Portland came to see this exquisite estate. But by 1932, um, it was not a happy marriage. In fact, Edna had a very powerful telescope that she kept in the den, and so she could see out to the swimming pool to see if he was with the secretary, or she could see out to the uh, gazebo if he was with one of the maids, or out to the lawn with someone else. And so by 1935, they were divorced and separated. Lloyd took off with the pregnant secretary to Europe, and Edna and the children were left here. The house was way too expensive for her to handle, and, uh, and uh, 
just too large for her family. And so it fell to Aaron Frank, Jerry's father, to step in and take care of, you know, the question was, what am I going to do with the house? What are we going to do with the house? So Jerry's dad financed the house until they came to a solution. The solution came when uh, little Albany College, a teacher's college from Albany, moved to Portland and they were looking for a campus. And so they connected with, with Aaron Frank and hoped to put something together so that they could, they could acquire it. Uh, Aaron said, I'm not selling you this property until uh, you hire a president. And so I believe they went to California and they found Morgan O'Dell, brought him in, and everybody in California told Morgan O'Dell, don't go, this college is in the, on the brink of disaster, don't go. But Jerry, uh, Jerry Frank's dad, Aaron Frank, brought him out to the manor house, out to this beautiful property, and when Morgan O'Dell stepped out of the car and walked up to the drive, he was sold. He knew that this was the property he wanted. And so he took the job, and uh, it, by 1942, Albany College moved into the property. By 1946, they changed the name to Lewis and Clark College. The amazing thing is that the Albany College bought this beautiful place for a total of $46,000. I'm Donna Lawrence, and I lived in this house uh, in my freshman and sophomore year. Uh, I began in 1948. It was the only dorm for women. Attic the penthouse when I was here, and um, and it was uh, there was even a, a desk, a few desks up there besides our eight beds, and um, um, beautifully tiled bathroom. It's all the tiling in this house is white and black then, and it's still here. Um, a, a very funny thing, looking back now, uh, the girls smoked when I was here, it, it, some of them did, and um, it, it, it's um, at the top of the stairway, of the curving stairway is where they gathered, they smoked in that room, and they played bridge, and it was so smoky, it, you, I don't see how they saw their cards, and I was only in it once or twice because it was just choking. It was, it, it, the name of it was the Blue Room. That's what the girls called it because it was, the smoke was just in layers. It was really bad. It is now the president's office. <laughs>